What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and it's that time of year already. Today we're gonna be checking out the top five gaming keyboards from 2021, showing off some of the best and top sellers that came out this year. Now with Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up literally next week, hopefully you guys can catch some of these on sale. All the keyboards said we listed for you in the description down below so you can check them out. But also this could serve for a great, you know, wish list idea and things to add for your wish list this upcoming holiday season. So it's a top five video, but there's really nine keyboards today. We've got some honorable mentions and you'll see in a minute. So let's kick it off now. Coming in at number five for me is the Asus Falchion Wireless 65% Keyboard. And I reviewed this back in March and it has some really cool features that you don't really see from gaming companies on a pre-built like this, which is why I was so impressed with it. I really feel like this flew way under everyone's radar. First up on the left side is this touch bar. It can be used for volume control, media playback, programming in the software, and be other touch macros, because it has five inputs just on this touch sensitive strip. Above that then on the top side is this light bar. This is your battery level indicator. It'll do things like pulse to let you know when it gets to a certain battery percentage. You can also just have it synced to the RGB lighting. You can configure what the light bar does in their software, uh, but a pretty cool addition. And speaking of which, another great thing they included is this dust cover and tray. This polycarbonate tray and cover can be used to protect the top of the keyboard when you're not using it to sort of, you know, shield it from dust, but also it can be used as like a secondary case. You just put your keyboard in it, it'll diffuse the RGB lighting on the side and look pretty cool. And there's even a cutout on the left side, so you can still access that touch bar, as well as on the back, there's a cutout for the power button and that USB-C charging port. Again, this isn't like a world shattering thing, it's just a nice bonus from Asus that I think looks really nice with the brushed metal finish. Inside is also this grippy rubber, so it won't scratch the board when you're using it. We do have PPT keycaps with RGB shine through lettering and front printed legends for your F row. And you can see things like, you know, media playback controls, RGB, macros, all printed here on the front of the caps. Now inside the Falchion is cherry red switches. They do also sell these in cherry blue and brown. And recently they released this with their own line of Asus ROG NX switches in their blue, red, and brown equivalent. They also lube their stabilizers, which is always a nice effort from a company. Now we'll do a sound test with these cherry red switches and we'll do a sound test for every keyboard coming up in this list. So you can hear how it sounds. So this comes in at $130, and again, for me, it's all about the effort. I love what Asus did with thinking outside the box, literally, giving us innovative features you don't usually see, and the fact that it's 65%, so you can still have arrow keys, and it's wireless, all just left a really great impression on me when I first picked it up and reviewed it. Next up at number four is the Razer Black Widow V3 Mini Hyperspeed Keyboard, but this is their special Phantom Edition. The difference here versus the regular V3 Mini Hyperspeed is we have their Phantom keycaps, which is Razer's sort of stealthy take at putting keycaps, but here I dig it's a darker diffused material. When the lights are off with a clear legend, it's nice and stealthy, and it's not until the LEDs are on that it actually does shine through. So you could choose to go with that matte stealthy look or have the full chroma shell, really. Taking a look at it, it definitely has that Razer aesthetic. It matches their other Black Widow products, but now with it being wireless, that'll obviously give your desktop a nice clean look with less cables. Now, like I said, with the 65% layout, you get the extra keys on the right above the arrow keys, and it's also labeled as M1 through M4 here. So in Synapse, you can assign these to be secondary functions and act as macros. And this extended 65% layout is definitely one of my favorites for that reason, especially since I just have no use for a numpad. Now in terms of switches, they do sell this in their Razer Green, which is the popular clicky switch, but they also have it in the new silent linear option with their Razer Yellow switch, which is what I have in my regular V3 mini unit. So you can choose between clicky greens and linear yellows. For this sound test, I'll do a mini typing test on both keyboards to get an idea for how each switch sounds.
So not bad overall, pretty typical from a green clicky switch, but the yellows, nice and dampened. They feel very, very smooth. But yes, the space bar and the stabilizers, definitely rattly, could use some work, but unfortunately, that's sort of common with these gaming pre-builds. Now, the main reason I have this at number four on my list and not better is because the price tag at 180 bucks is definitely a lot, sort of too much for a pre-built gaming keyboard. All that said though, it's still a pretty good buy. It's got 200 hours of battery life. The wireless connectivity is great with the Razer Hyperspeed. It also has a Bluetooth connection if you wanna use that. You can also just use it wired if you want. Two different switches to pick from, loving the Phantom keycaps. And I think it does enough to warrant a spot on the best of the year list. Again, this Phantom Edition is the way to go. Next at number three may shock some people. You probably didn't see this one coming. This is the L80 Cosmic Traveler from iQuinix. And let me tell you, they've done some really impressive stuff this year with keyboards. You're gonna remember me giving you this heads up when they explode onto the scene in 2022, trust me. So this Cosmic Traveler keyboard is a special edition of their L80 Lime releases. It's a compact 75% layout, has an incline towards the back with the F-Row, and given it's a themed keyboard, you can see this space theme with the astronaut keycaps and stuff like that. But they actually include a bunch of extra themed novelty keys inside the box, which is a really nice surprising bonus. Usually extra sets of novelties are like 40 to 60 bucks when you're looking at like a GMK set or something, but here they just give you a bunch already as alternative sets. Now it is all plastic and usually you don't love that when you're talking, you know, best of the year, but they make up for it in almost every regard. And first is their tuning. Not only are the stabilizers upgraded from the original CoStar to cherry plate mount now, but these are perfectly lubed to avoid any rattle. They're nice and smooth. And then under the space bar, they also added this little pad. This is so the space bar can sort of, you know, bounce off of that to avoid any harsh resonance. And even inside the keyboard, there's now a felt dampener to absorb that more plasticky sound. And the cherry on top for many is we have a hot swap PCB. But not only is it hot swap, it's a five pin south facing, which means you can use pretty much any switch in the market. You won't have to worry about, you know, keycap interference with cherry profile caps. So for me here in my unit, I have their TTC speed silver switch and they actually have 10 different switch types you can pick from. And also you can choose to get this board with or without RGB lighting, save you guys a few bucks. Uh, spoiler, the RGB in here is pretty dim overall since these stock keycaps aren't shine through. So you wanna save the money, you know, go without RGB. I mean, hot swap keyboards are definitely becoming more popular, yes, but I think iQuinix here did it right. But it's just a super, super impressive upgrade from their other previous keyboards. I think they really delivered in giving us a solid pre-built that not only looks unique, but sounds fantastic stock out of the box. So again, inside my unit are their TTC Speed Silver switches. Nice and light, great for gaming with them being you know, a faster linear switch. So we'll do a sound test now of the Cosmic Traveler. I mean, that's all stock. No further modifications. I think it's really, really good. Sounds good, feels good. They did a killer job. Some other additions is you have a, a 2.4 gigahertz wireless connection. Also has Bluetooth built in. You can use it wired with USB-C. So again, three different points of connectivity, hot swap PCB, five pin, all just really, really great stuff that sounds so good stock out of the box. Now pricing for this is kind of weird because again, you have so many different options between the 10 different switches and RGB and no RGB availability. So it ranges anywhere from like 160 to 220, depending on your configuration, which is pricey, yes, but I think all, all things considered here, with the amount of options and the final product, this pre-built is hands down one of the best out there, stock out of the box, without you needing to crack into it and do any further modifications. They nailed it with this special themed Cosmic Edition. Now, coming in at number two is a keyboard that I've had stuck in shipping for like two weeks now. I don't have it yet, but I've seen some reviews. I've talked to some people who I trust very, very much, and we're gonna toss it to Optimum Tech for the number two spot. 
Hey, what's up guys, Ali here, and I quickly want to tell you about the new Ducky One 3 Mini. This is a keyboard which I recently reviewed on my channel, and honestly, I'm pretty surprised with it. I think this is one of the best typing experiences that you can get both out of the box and around the $120 mark. I think this is specifically good for the group of people who are kind of exactly that. They just want a good keyboard out of the box. They don't want to spend a bunch of money on something that's custom like this, and they also don't want to spend a bunch of time modding their keyboard and tearing it apart. Ducky have done a really good job here with the 1.3 series so that modding really isn't required and at $120 it's a really great value board. In terms of the main upgrades over the 1.2 mini, firstly there is now a thin layer of foam underneath the PCB and there's also a thicker layer between the PCB and the plate. It does look super cheap and basic but this foam goes a long way in making the board sound a lot less hollow than the 1.2 mini. And the next main upgrade is of course the completely hot swap PCB. That means that removing and swapping the switches and installing something that's a bit more premium, maybe a set of lube switches for example, that can so easily be done. A keycap and switch remover are included in the box and swapping out the switches is super quick and easy. Really my only complaint with this keyboard and probably why most people will get the 1.3 SF instead is the fact that it lacks the physical arrow keys which despite it being a very compact 60% keyboard those physical arrow keys would have been possible so yeah that is a bit of a shame. The arrow keys are not really important when it comes to gaming but hey for day to day use and editing for example, I would recommend going with the 1.3 SF instead. Of course, you can still use the arrow keys on this board and the media keys and the RGB functionality that is activated on a separate layer by holding the function key. The colorway that we have here is called Daybreak and it's definitely pretty unique. Most people will probably want something a bit more neutral, but for that, we'll have to wait a little bit longer. And lastly, here is a quick typing test to get an idea of what the board sounds like. This one is using Cherry MX clear switches, which I'm honestly not a big fan of. Probably want to go for something like a red or a silver switch if you're going to be using this for gaming. But of course, you can put whatever switch you want in here since this is a hot swap keyboard. So again, great to see Ducky really listen to community feedback over the years since they released the one too mini and give us a hot swap keyboard, great sound dampening, and altogether, the one three mini seems like a killer, killer keyboard. Can't wait to get my hands on it once it finally gets delivered. It's been stuck, like I said, for two weeks. But shout out to Optimum Tech. Definitely check out his channel if you haven't already. And uh, he did a great review on it, and it was definitely worthy of being number two today. Now. For number one, and don't tune out right after this, because remember, like I said, we have honorable mentions coming up. Number one is a tie. We have two different keyboards, but let me explain. It'll make more sense, and let me pick them up because they're big boys. For number one, the tie spot is between the GMMK Pro and the Keychron Q1. So I'll break it all down for you guys, but for starters, both keyboards are in the 75% form factor, and they look nearly identical at first, but each board has its own personality and subtle differences that make each its own worthy release. And I'll first begin with, you know, taking a look at the GMK Pro separately. They sell this both in a black slate and a white ice unit, which is more like silver, and it's a bare bones kit, they call it. So it does come assembled out of the box. You don't need to like build it up from the plate and PCB and all that but you do need to finish it off and buy your own choice of switches and a keycap set separately. One great feature is it comes with a rotary knob on the top right hand side, which is great for using it for like, you know, volume control, zooming in and out or scrubbing a timeline. It's all programmable here. And we have their own lubed goat stabilizers already installed. Uh, they are PCB screw in for extra stability, if you will. And we have a color matching gasket mount hotspot PCB inside for both units, which does support five pin switches in the south facing orientation, which means like I said before, there won't be any interference issues with certain keycap sets and you can use pretty much any switch you want. Build wise, the GMK Pro is a chonker. It weighs 3.3 pounds out of the box from its fully CNC aluminum body. And again, that's, you know, bare bones. There's no switches and caps even installed yet. And it does come with the stock aluminum plate inside, although you can choose to buy either a brass or a polycarbonate plate as well, but that's separate. So the main thing here with the GMK Pro is this. 
At 169, you get a solid bare bones kit that you still need to fully build out with your own choices, which is in keycaps. You do have crazy RGB with some side glow as well. The built-in rotary dial, you can also swap out with other colors and materials. Again, sort of color match it if you want. It's got USB-C, other plate options available if you want to customize it. A pretty solid bare bones kit. On the other hand is the Keychron Q1. Similar layout in terms of design, but for $169 plus shipping, you get a fully pre-built keyboard that does come with switches and color matching keycaps. On the site, you can pick from either a black, navy, or silver color option, plus a choice of their three phantom red, brown, or blue switches. Again, completely built for you already out of the box for $170, but you can choose to buy a bare bones kit for $150 if you'd like. Keychron also gives you a stock coiled aviator cable inside the box, and since the Q1 is both Mac and PC compatible, they include a set of eight extra keycaps for you with the appropriate OS modifiers and a few extras as well. And they do that because on the back side is a dedicated Mac and Windows sort of switcher, which will automatically toggle between different preset layers for that OS. You can control like screen brightness and stuff on your Mac if you want. Although don't game on a Mac, right? So where this differs from the GMK Pro is the lack of exciting RGB, if you will. Plus there's no light bars on the sides of the keyboard. And stock, there is no rotary dial on the top right. We just have a badge in this spot. Uh, but you can also choose to like design your own badge on their site for 10 bucks if you want like your logo there or something. Or you can just remove the badge altogether and add an extra key switch here. Since again, it's entirely hot swap. Five pin PCB. Although they did say that a rotary knob is right around the corner, but they said that like three months ago as well. The area they both differ in, which is why I have them at a tie right here, it's gonna come down to your preference and sound profile. For the GMMK Pro, I can't stress enough how solid materials wise this is. It's heavier, it feels more premium I'd say, but also those properties really deaden the sound of your switch and takes away the distinctive sound profile of a lot of your switches out there. On the other hand, the Q1 is more hollow and has this nasty metallic resonance to the keyboard stock. However, it's much easier to mod by taking it apart. You can also add like foam inside, they include some for you, which will absorb that hollow sound. And the Q1 has a proper gasket mounting method. So you have this really nice natural flex to your board when typing. Not the board itself, but the PCB. It's a really nice feel. So we'll do the sound test now before my final thoughts on these two keyboards and then get into the runner ups. Um, like I said before, in this Q1, I have their Phantom Brown switches, which are stock uh, lubed tactile switches. And then in the GMK Pro, I have their lubed uh, glorious holy panda switches, glorious panda switches also lube tactiles. Okay, so bringing it back around for my wrap up of these two. And as you heard from that sound test, they're pretty distinct in each of their own keyboard, right? So like I said before, GMMK Pro feels more premium out of the box. You have to buy your switches, you have to buy your keycaps, all at extra you know, cost in the end, but it is a more premium feeling keyboard that deadens the overall characteristic and sound of your switches because the CNC body is just so thick and heavy and full. Whereas on the Q1, if you want to customize it, crack it open, add some foam, 
other mods. You have a lot more potential because it is so hollow where you can still get that more characteristic sound out of your switches without having to completely deaden it. And it still has that really nice flex. And if you don't want to you know, put that much effort into it, what did I say? 170 plus shipping and it's got switches and keycaps for you. So depending on what you're looking for, depending on what you want to do, how much more work you want to put into it, you have those both options and it's why they're both number one on my list today. Now, three honorable mentions. Rounding out our list of top of 2021 is going to be the Fnatic Streak 65 LP. This is actually a new version from the 2020 model and it has some nice upgrades this year. I really did want to fit this onto my top five, but since it is just a re-release from last year's model, I figured I'd at least still fit it into the honorable mention spot. First, it's now all white and looks super clean. The RGB just comes to life reflecting off the aluminum plate. I think it looks killer. The 65% layout returns, but now we have improved keycaps with them being low profile double shot PBT. They added an internal layer of sound dampening foam for better acoustics, and they give you a color matching white coiled USB-C cable inside the box to use with it. Inside it uses their speed low profile switches. They're 35% lower in profile and have just one millimeter of pre-travel. Again, nice and light, great for gaming. And stabilizers are also lubed. And the whole package all together for 120, I think is a fantastic price. It's a great option out there. Looks, feels, and sounds really great for that price of 120. And by the way, I'll do the sound test of all three runner-ups at the end of the honorable mention segment. Next is the HyperX Origins 60. And at its core, if I'm being honest, it's nothing too, too special. But it's just another solid option out there for those who want a more compact 60% mechanical keyboard. It's entirely aluminum, nice build, has double shot PPT keycaps with side printing for all your secondary functions since, you know, it's 60%. It comes in just their HyperX Red Linear Switch and includes a nice novelty spacebar of this topographic pattern, which, as I'm sure you know, I am partial to. Again, nothing mind-blowing here. I feel like HyperX kind of played it safe with this release, and it probably would have been higher up on my list or, you know, better ranked if this was available with their Aqua Switch option, which I love. A pretty good option out there, nice 60% keyboard, and it comes in at 100 bucks. Then last on the honorable mentions list is the new release of the Razer Huntsman TKL V2. The original tournament edition TKL was extremely popular when it came out in 2019. And this actually has five changes and upgrades from that model. First are their dampened optical linear switches. You can see on each side of the red stem, there are these two little silicone pads embedded into the switch itself, which will help out with acoustics in the sound profile. Second change is the actual inclusion of a dampening pad inside the keyboard to, yet again, help absorb any high-pitched resonance that was definitely plaguing that first model. Third change to go right along with that is these rubber pads that are installed on the standoffs inside, which are underneath all the stabilizers to, you guessed it, help the sound profile. Fourth change is the keyboard now has an 8,000 hertz pulling rate with their new chip inside, which is over the 1,000 hertz that most keyboards have. It'll technically be faster, especially when you combine it with their optical switch, but pulling rate I think is uh, more important when it comes to a gaming mouse, not so much on keyboards. And the fifth and final change is the inclusion of a padded wrist rest. This new V2 comes in at 160.
All right, guys, so that'll wrap it up for the top five gaming keyboards of 2021, even though it's more so top nine. But again, with Black Friday and Cyber Monday coming up, hopefully you can snag some deals, save some money, uh, use this to build your holiday wish list, send this to your parents, be like, hey, get me one of these keyboards. And uh, like I said before, everything you saw today will be listed for you in the description down below so you can check it out. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And lastly, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We have a ton of holiday content and top fives coming out right around the corner. I'm Random Frank P. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.